question is that the motion be agreed to. I call Charles Chevelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the bill uh, to amend the uh, emissions trading scheme, uh, a move for the New Zealand economy described by the member who's just re resumed his seat as, sig as significant as the introduction of the GST, has been in the hands of members for some 10 or 15 minutes. We haven't seen the content of this legislation until now. And to make it worse, the government won't even release the Cabinet papers and the officials' advice concerning the costs of this revised scheme. We asked for that information on an urgent basis under the Official Information Act, but the Minister has made it clear that it will not be made available until well into the Select Committee process. And no doubt, sir, there will be many redactions from the, from the material that we'll have to uh, go to the Ombudsman about. This material should not be hidden. Uh, from the people, it should not be hidden from the opposition, it should not be hidden from the parliament. And it's shocking, sir, that this comes from a party, this behaviour comes from a party that parades what it calls its fiscal rectitude, uh, as I said earlier, sir, while introducing changes to the New Zealand economy that it said are equivalent in magnitude to the introduction of the GST, and yet it denies people the right to see the basic costings uh, and, the, uh, and the official advice behind the legislation and the changes, and it tables the bill uh, at the time, essentially, that the speeches on this first reading have to be made. And the problem with that, sir, we've seen in question time this week, because we have a minister with carriage of the legislation who uses figures to suit him. We saw uh, papers tabled uh, in the House on Tuesday which purported to, to detail the cost uh, to the people of this uh, piece of legislation. We now see in the bill itself at page 33 of the explanatory note the true table without the omissions that the Minister made when he tabled the document in the House. And that's why the people need to see the official costings and the analysis and the Cabinet papers. Because as Labor has learnt to its peril, sir, uh, over the last couple of weeks, that is not a minister who can be trusted on the assertions he makes, unless the material behind those assertions can be seen and tested. Sir, so, the uh, minister mentioned that uh, there was a desire to send this legislation to the special ETS select committee, uh, but uh, that Labor had declined to cooperate in that, and we certainly have, sir. The ETS committee was a complete waste of time and money, as the fact that its specialist advisers ate up the entire Office of the Clerk's budget uh, for advice to select committees in one year demonstrates, while at the same time it could produce only four minority reports, uh, as well as uh, what the government uh, came up with as a result of that uh, exercise. And, uh, sir, it is actually appropriate that this legislation should simply go to the Finance and Expenditure Committee, because this isn't a measure that will have anything to do with the environment. It won't help protect the environment. It is simply a measure that is designed to extend subsidies to emitters. As such, it's appropriate that the expertise to be brought to bear by the Finance and Expenditure Committee uh, should be brought to bear uh, on the legislation. And here we are, sir, as I've said, considering a measure uh, with an impact of, on the economy equivalent to that of the GST, and we're considering under urgency, sir. Having, having gone home and run, run out of work at six o'clock yesterday, the government has us back here under urgency today on a major initiative, uh, and, uh, and here we are, sir, under, under urgency. Amazing house management. Brilliant house management. Now, sir, the existing emissions trading scheme puts a price on the emission of greenhouse gases that New Zealand has to account for under the Kyoto Protocol. In order to emit such gases on a continuing basis, different uh, sectors of the economy, on a phased-in basis, uh, <coughs> would, under the existing scheme, receive a, defined, receive a defined level of free credits in order to continue to pollute for a defined period of time. And if emitters needed or wanted to pollute over that level, uh, then they could basically buy a limited number of credits in order to do so. When they bought those credits, 
the government, from the revenue that it gained from that purchase, would fund a series of complementary measures designed to help our economy transition to the lower carbon uh, use of economy that uh, we all know we're going to need to do. We're going to uh, would have funded home insulation, the transition to electric vehicles, and so on, sir. Well, under the amendments that uh, are contained in the legislation that the minister uh, has just uh, introduced, uh, a very different scheme emerges. Uh, under that scheme, emitters will get a much longer transitional subsidy to allow them to continue to pollute. Those emitters are allocated ongoing rights to pollute on a so-called intensity basis, but without a cap, unlike the Australian proposed scheme, meaning that actually emitters are incentivised to continue to increase to their pollution rather than to decrease it, the complete opposite of the intention of an emissions trading scheme. No cap and trade uh, in this so-called cap and trade scheme, no cap. And the emitters have the dates on which they will enter the scheme pushed out by up to two years. Now in the short term, uh, the analysis in the explanatory note indicates that there will be, uh, to 2030, an extra cost to taxpayers of about half a billion dollars, sir, uh, as a result of those changes. Then, for the four years between 2013 and 2017, uh, the costs will go down slightly, but that seems to largely be uh, because motorists are brought into the scheme up to a year earlier, and so there'll be revenues uh, for the government that otherwise uh, wouldn't have been available. Uh, so, uh, but, we, but if we look at the out years, sir, that the ministers so blithely dismissed and said, oh, you can't, uh, you can't make reliable uh, estimates as to, uh, as to what will occur then, if you actually look at the table, the full table, it ought to have been tabled in the House on Tuesday, uh, but which does appear in the legislation at page 33 of the explanatory note, it can be seen that the missing two columns that the Minister didn't table earlier in the week for 2020 and 2030 show a very hefty additional cost to taxpayers. By 2030, that's estimated to be $2 billion additional a year, sir. Now that's serious money. Even discounting it back into today's money, no, $2 billion in total, and after 2030, half a billion dollars a year. Every year thereafter. We're talking about... Uh, the cost of the ACC system, or the prison system, about a third of the education budget, or the entire cost of the police, given away each year to polluters, and you and I, sir, will be paying for it as taxpayers. This is neither environmentally nor fiscally sustainable, and it will have to be rolled back. But polluters, like Methanex and Rio Tinto, sir, will be laughing all the way to the bank, because, uh, to use the example of Methanex, they're going to get a billion dollars over 10 years to increase their emissions by 5%. That's basically the effect of the amendments uh, that have been tabled today. This is just madness, sir. It's utter madness. There are another couple of matters that I want to turn to, because uh, if you have a look, sir, uh, at the explanatory note, the Treasury says that the alignment with Australia that this uh, legislation attempts is very bad public policy. Uh, it says, it points out that Australia doesn't even have a scheme. Ministers shouting out uh, in the bill that he's just put on the table of the House. If he looks at page 12 of the explanatory note, he can see that the Treasury says, in, a, in essence, why on earth would somebody try to harmonise with a country that doesn't even have a scheme, that might not even have a scheme if the legislation there doesn't get up in the Senate in November? And why on earth would public policy proceed on this basis? Now, sir, there's also, uh, we're told by the Minister last night in the uh, briefing he offered us, there is to be a treaty clause inserted in the final version of the legislation. But this isn't going to be introduced uh, by the Māori Party until the Committee of the Whole, meaning that the Select Committee and therefore the public are going to have no opportunity to submit on it, sir. Uh, and the other alleged concessions that we've heard to the Māori Party won't be included in the bill, but will be by way of variation to government policy later on. Sir, so, Labor will have no option but to roll back these amendments when next in office. National could have had a deal with Labor if it had negotiated in good faith that would have endured and would have given ongoing certainty over climate change policy. Instead, what we're seeing, sir, is fiscally irresponsible legislation that will harm, not help the environment. This is a day of shame, sir, 
Shame for the National Party. Shame for the Māori Party. A shame for New Zealand. I call 